Oh yeah, back on the transmission. We did all our mock-up yesterday, so now we're going ahead and take this apart and do the final uh, adjustments on it and put it together for real. So, my biggest problem right now is figuring out what to do on the seal over here. So, I got it in, back in my oven right now in a holder expanding it. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to put it on. I can take like this nut right here and beat the seal on right here. So it goes over the, over the snout there. That's out of the way. But the disadvantage of beating on this on the outside is this case race can move on you and go inside the case. It only holds in with about this much area, so it's very easy. You can probably knock this thing loose, which will affect the alignment in here and also take your in play out and all that. So I don't really like that idea. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and uh, press it in there, take the whole thing apart, and press the seal into the race and support the race on the back side here so that they can't move. The case is not in the picture when I push in the race. So that's your least uh, chance of doing any damage to the seal and to doing it, knocking this out. So that's the way I'm going to do it. <clears throat> I was looking at my shift fork alignment here and when you push this fork all the way in it actually does rub against the gear. So I'm going to leave it where it is because it's got a lot of um, side to side play in here. Right here. So you go like this. When you go all the way this way, it engages in the gear. See how it pushes the gear over there? See how it pushes it? So it actually hits on it. But if you're in a normal spot right here, you get all this float right here, it'll be next to the gear but not engaged. So I'm going to leave it at that. So it's as close as you can get to it without hitting on it. And we already figured that the uh, alignment on this side was good over here on the high gear one. So I'm not going to play with that no more. All you got to do is tighten the nut up really good, make sure the lock tab's on it, and it should be good to go. And we're going to leave the timing right here alone because if you watch the previous video, you can see why we're going to do that. So we'll keep this, the timing mark stock. And this is our push rod. I don't like how loose it is right here. There's no real support on the shaft. So without making some kind of real thin bushing to go in there, that's pretty much how it's going to be. So one advantage is the fork here is nice and wide. So it's going to push on it pretty evenly no matter what you do. So it's going to kind of like self-center. Now they might do that on purpose, I don't know. On the big twins they got a bushing over here to support it, but who knows. It seems to work. I don't know if the shaft is made as identical to stock because I don't really have a good stock shaft to go from. It's been too many years since I've done mine, so I don't remember. There you go. So, so now it's just a matter of stripping them apart and then put all back together for real. Hopefully there's no issues taking the part. So the first thing I do is get the shifter shaft out of here. Valuable tool. Gotta have the important tools. And I like tools on this side of the bench, not that side. stuff first. That stuff's hard to do. So. Okay, well, this is not in there all the way so hopefully we can just leverage this out. Can okay, need something a little bit smaller to go in there. That's what they make these quarter drive socket sets for. You have variable diameter leverage tools here. See? There you go. You, know, you have to overcome the spring tension right here, so you put your hand in there, just kind of push on it. You can overcome it and get the shaft to come out evenly by wiggling around. There you go. So it looks good. So we got a new seal here. We can even replace this, or I put goo on it. I'll probably just put goo on it because the new ones don't fit very well. You wind up shearing the rubber off, put them in. Sealer DG just works as good as anything. Okay, this comes up. You have to rotate a little bit until the notch line is where you can get to it here. 
Gage and the dogs. Ah. Should have shifted it to a different gear. Yep. Okay, where's my Looks like you should have it in high gear. There you go. See the notch lines up. Goes right back in. So you want to be about second and a half to high gear right in that area. And it goes up and down nice and easy. So if it's in second and a half, you got double neutral. So that'd be your best place because you're in between second and third, which is neutral. See, it's this distance here. So, so it looks like that's where you put the lever and it drops right in. So remember that when you assemble it. Okay. Now we're going to be using a different sprocket. We'll be putting a new one on here with the old original seal on it. Pair of dikes works best for getting the keys out. The one thing about having a gasket in here overnight for basically two nights now. It has probably dried in the bigger size, so you have to worry about it being a tough fit putting it back in. But we'll see. We're going to put glue on it anyway, so it'll kind of stick itself anyway. We got two different color paints here because the transmission case is a different color. We've been using those other parts of the bike. World War II, they had two main different colors they used, and then they had another three or four variations of that. So there's lots of different colors on the military bike, original. Because every time they had another batch of paint, it was different. So if everything matches, it's not correct anyway. That's a good way of showing an original bike and a restored bike. Oh, I forgot to tighten that up. I'll do that outside. I'm going to tighten this up and lock it down. We'll do that twice. This one here, we'll double check to make sure this one's tight. So I'll, I'll knock the tabs down on this one and then make sure this nut's tight too. I never trust anybody else to have it right because they just. stayed in there too. Look at that. You know how long that's going to last, don't you? About that long. And our gasket's stuck on there. We'll be taking off and sealing it. <clears throat> well, that came out as a unit. That's good. Before the shift fork was binding on the high gear or the dog, but this time they pulled out evenly, so that's a good good thing. Makes it easier. Make sure you put the washer exactly back how it came off the shaft. Because they do fit up differently. And that will change your in play. So make sure it goes exactly how you had it. 
Strips right apart pretty quick. Well, most of the bearings stayed. I think it'll fall out easy, but it don't want to come out. Okay, so I'm going to put all the rollers back up on here. I'm going to attempt to put this together with all the rollers on there. See how long that works. I suspect that's not going to work very well. Not without more grease, so I'll have to re-grease all that. Okay, so now we're down to just our bearing race in there. So now I can go ahead and start putting it back together from this point. Well, actually, we've got to put studs in here before we do that. But we can do that now or later. Let's see. Probably easier to press on it with them out, but it's easier to put them in now than later. Where's my studs at? Okay, here's the four different studs we got to choose from. Let's see what we're going to use in this job. Okay, there's the two studs. Uh, one of these is supposed to have a shoulder on it, though, as I recall. There it is. So we got one of these. This one's not all chewed up, so we can take one of these here. To not chewed up. So we can eliminate this one here that's all chewed up already. So I gotta put a die on here to make sure these two uh, threads are good. That goes in relatively easily, so it'll work. So we can use this one here. That one there. We're gonna eliminate this one. So let's see, we'll do our junk pile down here. We're gonna reuse this, looks like a reproduction. So we're going to have to use that one, and then we got two of this one, so we can pick out the best one out of the two. And this one has the best coating. And these threads here look kind of crappy, so we'll use this one. Okay, so i got to double check the threads on all of those before those go in, so we're going to do that right now. What was the other thing I had to do over there? I forget. Uh, I think that was it. Sometimes I forget what I'm doing around here. All right, so now I gotta get a die for this. I'm get this one right here. So I'm gonna go over here and see how these work. I'm thinking that one looks pretty good. Burrs on that, but that went on. One of these I already did, but I forgot which one it was, so we'll just do them both again. Obviously, that one's good. That one's good too. Roll it to make sure it's straight. So if you just roll your studs across here, if they don't wobble, they're straight. That's the one that needs to be done. Yep, that one's not going to go. So those threads have been worked over a little bit. All right, so we have to have the die holder do this one. Oop, there goes the stud. Make sure you're engaged. Here, got a vise right over there to hold it with. A little bit of cutting oil. It's a smooth faced jaw, so it doesn't damage the stud.
button. And the other stuff's better. So, I did a lot of cutting on that, so we'll check that. Maybe we'll put that old crappy looking stud in after all. We'll see. Alright, this side's good. Let gravity help you. It goes quicker, see? Alright, we'll put a nut on this and see how it feels. It's definitely did a lot of cutting there. Put your tools back where they come from, you don't lose them. Alright, let me get back over here. <clears throat> Alright. So. Oh, that doesn't like it very much, does it? This old crappy stud works a lot better, see? This thing's been mashed. There it goes. It's on there, it's not as happy. Got run a couple times to get it form fitted, I guess. You gotta get the nut to match it. Alright, we'll try it, see if it works. <clears throat> if not, at least we can change this out without taking the trans apart. So it's not a major major deal if it doesn't quite work out. Okay. So now I gotta put the two studs in here. So the shoulder stud goes on the top, right here. And the non-shoulder one goes down here. I forget why they do it that way. It's probably a dowel for the side cover. Maybe that's what they're doing on this thing. I'm not sure. Wouldn't be that anyway, it'd be this one. See they gotta see how dowled out a little bit right there. There, see that's a dowel pin. It helps line the cover up a little bit. Also helps screw up the gasket a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna put these on. These are Loctite. Problem is, I don't want to go in the case. There it goes. Those threads were questionable. But they're going on. They're protesting, but they're going on. Okay, I need a couple nuts to use. There's one. Where's my other one at? The other nut's missing. You take two uh, nuts, gem them together, and then you can tighten it. Same thing with the next one. Oop, wrong side. Don't get too many threads for the second one. There, they're there. Maybe 
tiny too much you strip it so okay now this one doesn't have a stop on it so you can only go in so far so we'll make it the same height as the it's already in there they're going to probably both the same because they cover the same thickness on both so it makes sense you'd have the same length bolt on both which is good measure see what it is about 2.2 inches Looks like it's about 2.2 inches no. 2.240 inches I think I go about another three quarters of a turn more Problem is, it still don't want to go no more. Okay. The Loctite's already kicking in hard. Make them both the same, see? 2.2 inches on that one, and right there you do the same. 2.2. It's actually about 190, but they're both the same. Okay, that takes care of that problem. I have to go back and find some nuts. Hope we got a couple nuts right here. We got nuts. Okay, so those are now on there. like to wipe off the excess Loctite if there's any. Okay, let's make sure the cover goes on there before we put all the parts on this thing. Sometimes you gotta do a little fine tuning. Okay, they go on there. Close. Got a lot of room for air in there. The gasket coming off. The gasket's working its way off now. Okay, so now I gotta put the seal in here. So I gotta come up with a way of doing that. That's gonna be a stack of something that's about this tall. Something to fit over on top of that. That fits. We got a spacer. There's one. And I'll use a block I got over there. It's probably about the right height, I think. Okay, then we got to get a one to go over here to push this in flat. pushing it flat against the case. Alright, so that should give me most of what I need to do that. Okay, so that's not the seal we're using. Now you gotta make sure you push this thing in there before you put the seal in there, you'll be screwed. So you can't put this in once the seal's in. This protects this keeps the, the wash from going in behind the seal and chewing it up. So you have to have this in there. I also want to peen this a little bit because it's a little bit uneven. Smooth it up a little bit, but the 
workbench isn't quite strong enough to really f do a good job of it. This doesn't have to be perfectly flat, but it needs to be relatively flat. So it's pretty straight now. Hopefully it fits inside the case. Okay, so let's go put this away and we gotta go get a seal. And then we gotta put it all together. Alright, let's go over here. Get our press set up. Washer. Problems our press is too high. Yep. And the other problem is is the bearing race has got some sharp edges in here, which I didn't deal with yet. So we've got two problems here right now. We need something a little bit shorter on this, which we can deal with. Get something drop down at least a half inch more than we got. So this combination is not working. And we need to deburr this this edge here. It's got a sharp edge sticking up right there, which we can't have. So I gotta put a little chamfer in there. So we use a little chamfer tool for that. <coughs> our chamfer tool. Now if you don't do this the seal will get chewed up. And this is harder than hell. This nice strong cutter here doesn't appreciate this at all. So this is not carbide of steel. We just dulled it. This is a carbide one. Let's see if this works better. This doesn't work. I have to go back and grind it. And I got a lot of chips I got to deal with. It definitely is hard. Ooh, that's got some serious. I should have just done this earlier. Man, I didn't notice it. Preoccupied with fitting bearings and stuff. You're barking it up there, Scooby. Just tool to chip or low so you can wipe them out. Catch your nail on it, that's not a good sign. <laughs> Slide them off of here. Right 
All right. Most of it off, but I put a damn marker. I didn't want it in there. <clears throat> Now this comes in now like it's supposed to. That's my first clue that it's probably a problem. You can see how I chamfered the edge here a little bit. Put a little bit of a scratch right there too. No big deal. Okay, now the seal should go in a lot easier all the way around now. Hopefully. This going in out easier makes it that's usually a good sign that things are made right. I'm not fighting it like I was before. Okay, so now I gotta come up with a different combination of spacers here to push against. So, where's that big nut I have? Wasn't the right one. This here was the inner one. Okay, that should allow us to put it in there we want it now. Put that back in there. Put it over that way. issues. Yeah. Go that way. I had to flip the washer a little bit. Okay, so that one's ready to go in there right there like that. Camera's loose. So this has a little bit of a bow to it so I can either put it in bow up, which gets close to the seal, or I can bow it down, which gets close to the bearing. Now if it goes all the way against the against this race in here it'll tighten up it'll take some of the bow out we'll see I have to figure out how it's going to do that doesn't fit very well that way it's in this way a lot better yeah we'll go that way all right let's go get our seal bang bang get that out of the way okay let's go back here and Show you we did our seal. Right. Tripod's hitting on everything as usual. Okay, it's over in the oven. It's down to 120 degrees right now. Yeah, yeah, so there's the seal. It's been down here cooking away. So I got it pushed all the way down over my lip here. Warms my hand up. It's not 60 degrees like my air temperatures around here today. So that's what it looks like. Get back over here. Almost knocked that off the floor. Let's see here. Put that over there. 
All right, get over. We can see better. Okay, I made this sleeve a few years ago. It's a tapered sleeve, so it gets the seal sweated up there. These are old seals, so I heat it up to 120, 30 degrees in the oven and work the seal up over time. Let it kind of slowly get up in there. And these aren't CR seals like I thought they were. These are Victor seals. There you go, Victor. Here's your clutch gear. So this goes over the end of it. It fits really tight on this one on the aftermarket. It slides on nice and easy. So the sleeve is just a little bit tired, higher than the, the gear here, so it'll slide right across and go right up onto your seal with no problem. So you can go ahead and install this gear inside of here pretty easily. The problem with this one is it's so tight, it'll, it's going to want to push it off. But uh, reproduction gear, it's looser, so we won't have this much of a problem with it. This one here, you got to get it just right or it doesn't come off. There it goes. So it's a little, a little tight. So anyway, that's how that goes together. So that's how you get these seals on. Now, if you don't do it that way, you have to come here with a, a little small screwdriver. And you have to kind of shoehorn it down over that, over this lip here, which is really fun to do. So, because the seal goes in like that, like this. So this tool makes it a lot easier. Of course, nobody makes that tool, so you're on your own. All right, now this is going to go in here like this. I'm going to push it in, and this has to come off. There you go. It's now off. And make sure there's no tears or rips on the seal before you put it in. Looks good. So I'm just going to push it on in there. Okay, go down until it's flush. And it's in there. See the seals in there nice where it belongs. So I'll go ahead and put my seal race back on here. Swedger. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and install this. The seal, now this actually swedged it quite a bit before, this wouldn't even go in there. So see how it just goes right in there like that. You just kind of swedge it, wiggle around a little bit, get up to the straight spot, which is probably right in that area. Pull the clutch gear back out. And you can see it's all up in there. And pull this out a little bit. More flush. There you go. So now we're more toward the outside edge. So it's all in there. So that swedges into it pretty easily, so it makes it nice. Alright, so now you can go see if everything else fits. Alright, we'll be back.